Hello, Corvus here. Today we're going to talk about Zack Snyder's Justice League, released in 2021. And it's uh, quite unusual. Uh, my main recommendation would be, depending on who you are, to see it, definitely see it, or definitely avoid it. Warning, we're going to have some spoilers. It has very mixed reviews and it shows if you go to uh to the internet movie database to rotten tomatoes or to metacritic you will see uh, some reviews that praise the movie like the best thing that happened to dc and um, some other reviews that are just happy that the movie ended it's always interesting to see a movie with so many mixed reviews uh it says something good about the movie uh, some people will love it, some people will hate it, but uh, most likely there is not going to be uh, that middle ground, like uh, the movie was meh, it's like it's a 10 out of 10, or it's a uh, don't watch the movie at all. This really gives us a lot of information. What kind of movie are we watching? Well, it's a superhero movie, that's the main tale. If you particularly like uh, the heroes of DC, there's a very high probability that you're going to enjoy this movie. Uh, especially if you had the chance to watch the previous version. Uh, interesting thing, Zack Snyder had to leave the production. Apparently the movie was almost done, but he had some uh, family trouble. Uh, one of her daughters uh, died. And he uh, decided to step down the production to take time to be with his uh, family and um, somebody else stepped in just with him and introduced his particular vision and touch apparently he reshot 80 percent of the movie and the final product was not really what Zack snyder was uh, was intending at the beginning so uh, it's kind of interesting to see uh, four years later in 2021 this version from Zack Snyder the running time is something to be scared of if you are not a fan uh, that's part of the mixed reviews I'm also I'm guessing it's uh, four hours long so if you are into superheroes uh, you are going to enjoy the four hours if you are not that into superheroes uh, probably you are going to enjoy some of the cinematic language uh, the way he frames some scenes the way that uh, he's mixing uh, the slow motion with uh, how he frames some of the of the characters for example one of the main things that you will see right away is that the proportions are different why is that well uh, pretty much every movie that comes out right now uh, it will be in a widescreen format or something like that. It's uh, longer. And uh, the first thing that you can see about the Zack Snyder cut is that it's using letterbox. Yeah, it's closer to a, to a square. And this is very weird because very few TVs or uh, computer monitors have this particular proportion. Uh, so from the start, he's making a statement. He's saying, you know what? This is my vision. And if you have a way to bypass that, I would recommend it. Uh, normally, uh, when they intended to film on a letterbox proportion, uh, they use the full frame. But if you actually stretch the movie, uh, maintain the proportions, you, you don't want to make it everything super wide. Just scale it till you have a uh, full cover of your screen, you will see that nothing gets cut out in the four hours. So yeah, he uh, is using his vision, he's making a statement by using the ladder box proportion, but it also is taking into account, you know what, uh, maybe the studio or maybe in the future I'm going to release a widescreen version. And if you have the means to uh, alterate the proportions or how it, it gets displayed on your uh, TV or monitor, try it. 
if you scale it to cover the full screen, you are not going to know that you that it was originally on Letterbox. You are not going to miss anything. Uh, the most important things are there. Uh, you won't be cutting out the head of nobody at no point in the movie at the full four hours. So, yeah, he's making a statement, but also uh, taking into account, I may need to make this a widescreen version sometime in the future. Other uh, interesting thing is that I've seen some uh, some videos entitled uh, "The Meaning of uh, the Ending" or "What uh, Does That Part of the Movie Mean," especially regarding the movie. And it's not really a complicated movie. I mean, even if you are not that familiar with that universe, uh, we have uh, six parts of the movie, and they pretty much take all the time they need to explain without any kind of hurry what's happening and if you take into account that this is a superhero movie it's also not that complicated superheroes have to save the day it's uh, also kind of funny if you compare uh, DC to Marvel that uh, we have this kind of uh, super strong villains that are capable of uh, destroying worlds completely uh, with a special kind of artifact. Other thing that I got from some reviews is that a lot of people are saying we have a lot more action. Um, well, in a four hour movie, it's expected to have more action if it's if you are watching a superhero movie. Uh, however, if you make the calculation, there's not that much action, really. At least until uh, pretty much half of the movie. Uh, or at least meaningful action scenes that really make the plot of the movie move forward. The fact that they are not having uh, a particular rhythm being an issue allows uh, the director uh, to tell a story in a different way. If you made this uh, fourth part series, I think it will be uh, equally successful or even more successful because uh, you are not only uh, given um, all the action moments to fans, but also a little bit of the backstory and why it's happening and uh, character development. Uh, some of the characters uh, seems to have a lot more depth and uh, the emotions that they are expressing seems to be more believable and this makes sense. You are uh, you have known these characters for at least twice the time. On the other hand, if you are not a fan, twice as long is not going to make it better for you. Other thing that seems particularly uh, interesting, in my opinion, is that every part, every part of this six, uh, has uh, like a subtitle. For example, part one, don't count on it, Batman. Part two, the age of heroes. Uh, these little subtitles are taken from a, a part of the dialogue. And uh, this really reminds me of uh, Breaking Bad. Uh, most of the titles of every episode are taken from a part of the dialogue. And uh, I don't know if this is intended to be uh, a description. They really don't need to divide this into six parts. There's really no case. They even have uh, a conclusion uh, where they uh, end up putting like uh, teasers or uh, possible additional material that it's uh, giving a hint that if they wanted in the future they could make some more movies uh, from what happens in alternate timelines. Other thing that I experienced during the movie, and um, maybe this is only me, please uh, if you have another opinion let me know, but uh, Commissioner Gordon, for example. 
I've seen so many. And, uh, my favorite, uh, at least personally, was uh, Gary Oldman. So whenever I see a different commissioner, it's just not as good. I mean, uh, I forget the name of this actor, Jonathan Simmons, I had to look that up. Uh, I mean, I like the actor, but it's for me, not Commissioner Gordon. And since we had uh, so many different movies depicting Batman and Alfred and the Commissioner, uh, after you've seen so many people play these characters, they end up having less weight. And it's like, oh, this was a good Batman. That was a better Batman. Oh, that Joker was uh, the very best. That one, not so much. But by having so much variety, uh, they lose their uniqueness. And this is one of the things that it's making me struggle with so many superhero movies all the time. I mean, it's uh, a good formula. I get that. Uh, the studios are trying to make money. Uh, people love superhero movies. They will go to the movies uh, or, uh, well, since we're in the pandemic, they will buy the subscription to, to see the movie. But if they keep pushing this many superhero movies, there will be one point that uh, they are not going to be that relevant. It's going to be like, oh, another Batman movie. But didn't they release a Batman movie last year? Yeah, but this is a new Batman with a new vision, telling the same story in a slightly different way. But you already know that story. So I, I think that, uh, at least for me, they are getting to that point. I know some people that already exceeded the super movie amount of movies that they can watch and enjoy. Apparently, there is still a lot of people that want these kind of movies. But in my personal opinion, if they are making so many versions, so many movies, they are not that impactful. I couldn't say that I hated the movie, but I couldn't say that I loved it. It had good moments, but uh, for example, if you try to make a drinking game every time, music that comes with uh, Wonder Woman action goes into the scene when she's jumping or just swinging her sword, you will end up so drunk that end up being uh, kind of a joke. It's like watching a comedy show where the laughter is recorded. You may not notice this. However, if someone tells you, I don't like that recorded laughter, most likely you'll say, what recorded laughter? But if you see the show, you are going to notice. And if they are laughing, and the joke was not fun, it will be something that will haunt you forever. You won't see that show in the same way ever again. So, if you want to spoil this a little bit for you, uh, watch the movie. And every time Wonder Woman goes into action and this kind of epic Amazonian uh, song or fragment goes into the action, that you will identify with this long note of a woman singing. Take that into account. And after the first time that you do that, you are going to notice that every time. And it's going to have this effect. And if you begin to catch this kind of uh, things happening, uh, I'm not going to say more things because I don't want to be blamed for uh, spoiling the movie for someone completely. Uh, it's a little harder to enjoy. So ultimately, should you watch this movie? I would say yes and no. If you like superheroes, if you like Marvel, if you like DC, if you like everything or anything superhero related, watch it and you will enjoy it. Even if you are not that into Superman or Batman or Aquaman, Wonder Woman, it's a good action movie. It's not the best one, but it's a good one. You will probably have to take some breaks, uh, but because it's a very long movie, but you will enjoy it. 
However, if you are not into superheroes, don't waste four hours of your time. It doesn't matter if the photography is fine, if the music is good, if the, it's a little darker way of representing the story, you are not going to like it. Uh, you wouldn't like it if it was two hours long. So four hours, save yourself the time, do something else. If you see the movie, please let me know what do you think. Do you really like the movie, but you are into superheroes? Uh, maybe prove me wrong and uh, you could hate superheroes, but this movie made you change your mind. Uh, please let me know. Also, I really appreciate any comments. If you like, please leave a like. If you didn't, please uh, let me know what can I improve. And if you subscribe, thank you very much. Thank you for watching, guys, and hopefully you will enjoy or avoid this movie. Bye.